Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 14, going through the top 10 red EDH or Commander cards. This video has come together pretty quickly, mostly due to a lot of help from the local magic scene here in the Seattle area. Many, many of these suggestions came from local EDH players over the last two days, and I thank them so much for helping me put this together. Uh, to be honest, I'm definitely more of a blue-white green mage. I'm in the Bant colors. I occasionally splash red, but it's really the help of everybody else that has made this into a good comprehensive list of some of the best EDH cards out there in red. This is aimed at the casual EDH player. There are some other amazing cards out there, such as things like Sneak Attack, that are well over 40 or 50 bucks at this point, but the idea is to find cards that you can easily add into a deck for just a few dollars. Second piece of criteria I've changed here, it's that I'm looking for cards that really have the feel of color, that they really bring out one of the high points of the color and makes it feel like you've added something to your deck. So here I'm looking for cards that really have that anger, damage, red effect to them. The third thing is still focusing on no blatant combos here, although there are many combo pieces out there and a few of these cards may even help you get to combo pieces. This is EDH, not Legacy. This is a political game where you actually interact with other people instead of play solitaire magic. The honorable mentions here, these are three cards that I'm really on the fence over. I, I don't care for them, so they didn't make the top ten, although they were suggested by several friends. Um, Chaos Warp has kind of a gambling feel to it. There's a chance that it could end up working out much worse for you, especially in EDH. You get rid of an attacking 4-4 creature that's been a thorn in your side, and you end up pulling out an amazingly large creature in your opponent or an enchantment, or it could end up just failing entirely, where they don't see a permanent and you've just removed the item. It, it's a very useful card, a great card that came out of the commander set. I'm, I just don't see it in the top ten yet. As I play with the card more, maybe I'll change my mind. Um, Price of Glory. Now this is an incredibly mean anti-blue card, and there are lots of really powerful anti-blue cards in red. I just wanted to highlight one. I actually don't think it's a good idea to put cards in that intentionally spike particular colors, although if, if you're going to do it, Price of Glory is definitely a way to do it. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, during another player's turn, destroy that land. Jockelhops is here as an honorable mention, as it's probably the red card that I've lost the most games to. I happen to play against somebody who has a Cascade deck that their commander often cascades into Jockelhops, winning the game. Uh, this is a game-ending card, and if you're going to destroy everything out there, this, this is one way to do it. Um, I don't care for the interaction that it creates unless you've got a way to win directly afterwards, but it's definitely one of the better cards that didn't make the list. I recommend checking it out. Uh, I've got a piece of bonus tech here that people often miss when putting together red decks. Goto, the Bandit Warlord. Uh, this is one of the EDH red commanders that I've played against the most. He is an incredible commander and a very good red card. This is a Stoneforge Mystic on steroids. When he comes out, you go grab a piece of equipment and put it directly into play. Agentum Armor is by far my favorite target for Goto. Bringing a piece of equipment into play and ignoring that six casting cost and being able to attach that next turn and remove or destroy permanence is just wonderful. Batter Skull also combos extremely well with this as Goto gives you an extra attack phase where you get to untap your Samurais and Goto, although if you've got creatures with Vigilance, they don't have to be Samurais, you can put this Batter Skull on anything, and you're starting to hit two times a turn with Lifelink. It's also ideal to put on Goto if you have no other creatures. Very, very nice combo. I recommend checking this out in your red decks. Even though it didn't make the top ten on the list, it's one of my absolute favorite red cards that I've lost to several times in EDH. Moving on here to number 10, I almost did not include this in the list when I first drew up the list before getting community feedback. I did not put draw cards on here. 
I'm an old school player that started pretty early on with Magic. Wheel of Fortune never really felt like a red card to me. I felt like blue is supposed to be the one doing card draw. I brought that up to the community when several people suggested this, and I think I'm a little bit out of touch with what has happened with red. Red has definitely gotten many more draw cards. Faithless Looting has, is going to be a staple in a lot of decks. Reforge the Soul is a, another throwback to Wheel of Fortune. Uh, there are also a pretty good amount of looter effects that are moving over to red. I have yet to find one I really like, although Mad Profit is close. It's got haste and a looter effect to it, but a little bit larger body. I may even put it into decks, but I'm definitely going to watch red more for draw effects. Wheel of Fortune is also just an incredible game swimming swinging card. You can go for no cards in hand to seven, often discarding an opponent's seven to give them a new seven where they've been carefully sculpting that hand. Mind Claw Shaman has made it to number nine here, which this card has only been out a little bit of time. I've got to play it several times in Limited and in EDH, and this card is just purely amazing in EDH. Being able to cast this with a little mana acceleration on turn three means that you grab the best sorcery or instant out of your opponent's hand and cast it right away without paying the casting cost. This card can swing games entirely and it has this wonderful steal your stuff from you effect that I really like out of red. This is the newest card on the set and it's a wonderful addition for EDH. I also think this may have some standard playability over time. One of the things that I always splashed red for many years ago was the ability to remove artifacts, and lots of EDH decks play artifacts. Shattering Pulse has to be my absolute favorite. A shatter with three mana to buy it back and use it again and again. This is a wonderful card. Shattering Spree works really well against heavy artifact decks as a one-time, and Viashino Heretic, if you're going the creature route, the ability to both do damage and destroy artifacts every turn is amazing in EDH. Definitely include at least one, if not two, of these in your red or red splashed EDH decks. Greater Gargadon is a card that I had not played myself, but I really wanted at least one big fatty in here, and this card has really caused me problems as a blue mage trying to steal people's stuff. I sometimes forget that it's suspended. When I go to grab something, I end up they end up just removing a suspend counter. It's one of the best big red powerful cards out there. Hammerback Goliath gets an honorable mention here, because I've definitely seen it crush some people. My Gen of the Infinite Rage has to be one of the more popular ones in the uh, community that I play in, although I've started to move away from land destruction and seeing less play, but it's got a nice 7-4 body, it's indestructible when cast from the hand. The destroy all lands effect is something I don't care for in EDH, uh, but can definitely be a game ender when you've also got a 7-4 on the table. Number six here is a land, so not technically a red card, but definitely fits in this category, and I really wanted to put this in here because I, I just can't put Lightning Bolt into the top 10 EDH cards, even though it's probably the best red card ever printed. Having 40 life, Lightning Bolt is just unimpressive, but Valakuku turns every mountain into a Lightning Bolt. When you combine this with Primeval Titan, you're definitely crushing your opponent. Lots of people underestimate how good 3 damage is, even in a 40 life game. But there's also other ways to even put this into a mono colored red deck, such as Terrain Generator here. Terrain Generator can put an extra mount in each turn. You're starting to hit people for six with a card like Wheel of Fortune to refill your hand. If you draw lands, then you've got something useful to do with these lands. I love Valakut. Great card overall and a very good EDH card, even if you're in two colors. This is an effect that has been around for since the beginning of Magic. I remember trying to make Fork extremely playable in my blue decks. I thought it would be great to fork an Ancestral Recall or a Time Walk. It, it worked okay, but to do that with damage spells or even the more powerful spells in EDH that are played at the 5, 6, 7 casting cost area is just incredible. Reiterate's got to be one of my favorite. I really love buyback in the EDH environment, and it really has that feel of a red card and being able to copy other its effects. Price of Progress is my absolute favorite damage card in EDH. I have put this in decks including my current five color Super Friends EDH deck. Between this and a Snapcaster, I've removed several people from the game. 
there's very little burn in EDH that is extremely good, but Price of Progress is an amazing one. I would much rather kill an opponent than cripple them with a Blood Moon or Ruination so they can just attack me again and again until I die to remove the Blood Moon. I, I love Price of Progress and it's nice to see a good burn spell on this. The number three spot, I wanted something that added haste, and I thought about this for a while, and anger has to be the absolute best way to add haste. Less people have graveyard hate than permanent hate in play. Fervor is definitely a good enchantment for having the same effect, and Eurobrask has got to be one of my absolute favorite legend cards out there, and also makes a very good commander, but it draws a lot of hate when it's on the board. But Anger is one of those things that people don't want to put into your graveyard, and it makes your whole deck better when you've discarded it with something like a Wheel of Fortune or a Faithless Looting to then add haste to your creatures. I, I love this card overall. It has that nice haste effect. In the number two spot here, I also wanted some type of a damage card that really hits your opponents very hard. Um, I also wanted to include a dragon. It seems wrong to do a top 10 EDH red cards without including a dragon. Bale Fire, Fire Dragon has to be one of my absolute favorite newer EDH cards to come out. It's extremely inexpensive, but can often wipe your opponent's whole board while leaving your board intact. It works as well as a bonfire does in a lot of situations. Uh, Bonfire does happen to be above the price threshold that I talked about, but I think it's artificially high currently. It's a current imprint card, and I'm pretty sure that we'll see it drop back down to a reasonable price range. But it is very playable in EDH, and it's playable in standard currently, which might be what's driving the price up. Uh, Warstorm Surge, I've seen Red Mages win entire games after resolving this card. This is, turns each and every one of your creatures into direct damage great card. Take a second here, see if you can guess what the number one card for EDH in red is. There we are, Insurrection. This has that ability to steal things from your opponent. This is a game-ending, amazing card. I've seen more games ended with this card than any other red card. This is also a staple effect that's been around for a long time in magic for red. Word of Seizing has to be one of my favorite lower casting costs. The idea that it's both split second so it can't be countered really has that red feel to it, that it spites blue, and that it takes any type of permanent. Uh, lots of players are currently playing Zealous Conscripts because you also get that extra body, that extra three damage. Zealous Conscripts has to be the one card that I hate most in standard currently because it's made my Super Friends deck unplayable, but it's a wonderful card in EDH. Grab the Reins gets an honorable mention here also because of the entwine effect. It has both the ability to steal one of your opponent's creatures and to throw that creature at them or a different creature at them, so it has that direct damage effect in it. Uh, these are the type of cards that I'm happy to add into e any EDH deck. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with EDH Top 10 Red Cards. Special thanks to the uh, Magic the Seattleing group on Facebook who gave me a lot of these suggestions. Also to Zach and Marguerite, two people who heavily influenced this with their suggestions for strong cards. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing your feedback and ideas. If I missed any cards, please let me know. Be moving on here to the next color, hopefully in the next week. Thanks.